I'll have to check it. Okay. I'll definitely do it again. Okay. Good morning. Hello, Mr. Jim. How are you? Good morning. Hello, Mr. Jim. How are you today? Good to see you, everybody. Good to see you, everybody.
it was about time to get started here, 10 o'clock, and we were glad to see all of you here today. And it's a beautiful day, isn't it? Amen. And if you're glad to get in the house of the Lord, let's give them a big amen together. Ready? Amen. amen. Thank God for that. Well, we're glad you're here. Let's stand together on this Memorial Day weekend. Dad's going to come lead us. Richard's filling in. And uh, so keep Charles and Linda in prayer. They're in Tennessee. Well, here's a good one to open up with. It's called We've Come Into His House. But uh, we're going to do this in Uncle Pello because the piano can't keep up with you. I don't think I'm that one. 361. 361. Okay, here we go. I'm looking over right now. We have come into His house and gathered in His name to worship Him. We have come into His house and gathered in His name to worship Him. We have come into His house and gathered in His name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. On to. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. Amen. Thank you there, preacher. Here's a good one here. How great thou art. No greater song than this one, Ron. Yeah, that's right. The piano. I think you can keep up with it. Oh, Lord, my God, when I am an awesome wonder, consider all the worlds I have.
Keith's out in the parking lot. And our prayers are with you, Keith. Yes. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow, but we know that he'll see his daddy again. Amen. And uh, thank God he testified to me one time that he knew he was safe going to heaven one day. That had been years ago. So they came for his graduation this week. So pray for the Hockett family. Okay, who else has one today to like to mention? Okay, Charlotte. Check on him this week. 
Mr. Hart, I love Mr. Hart. I'll tell you, he's a fine man. He's a little bitty fellow, but it, it, he's fine. He's a go-getter, isn't he? Yes, he is. I'll never forget, Art was uh, fishing with us one time, and I was on one side of the pier, and there was a big board in the middle, and they had fish records and pictures, and so he didn't know I was on the other side of him, and he was over on this side of the pier, and I could hear the conversation, and the guy was trying to get him to drink with him, and Art said, no, sir. He said, I love Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's what he told him. And he said, I'm not going to do that. I thought, man, yeah, Art's a fine fellow. But anyway, let's keep them in prayer. So also, we got Curtis and Hazel Burton, Captain, and Lou, uh, Captain and Judy Lynch. Uh, let's pray for Pauline and Lewis Taylor. And it's good to see Helen back. She's had bronchitis on top of the virus. And let's pray for Linda today, okay? Anybody else? Yes. Remember the families in Texas who lost their children. Oh, what a terrible tragedy, yes. Yeah. Down there in Texas, let's keep them in our prayers. All those families for those little ones and the two teachers. All right. Anybody else have one that's on the missing? Joe? Marie. Okay. Not feeling well today? Bless her heart. She comes when she can, I'll tell you. Get a, keep Marie in our prayers. She's such a fine lady. <laughs> Tell her we're thinking about her, Joe. All right. Anybody else today want to mention one? Okay, how about unspokens today? All right. Jackie, how's Bobby doing this week? Well, she's holding on. Okay. Still doing all right, though? Yeah. Well, pray for Bobby and pray for Jackie. I don't ever want to forget them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer then. Remember all these different ones as we go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, Jim, why don't you lead us in prayer, if you will, if we start our service today. Let's pray. Our Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to pray. Yes. So many requests, Lord. We can't remember them. We're just human. But God, you know every one of them, yes. every hurt, every ache, every pain. And we pray, God, have your will in each and every one of them. Touch them. Amen. As you see fit, Lord, then bring them all back together. Amen. Lord. Please in you because you've done it all. Oh yes. God, thank you for dying on the cross for us, Lord. Help us to worship you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Jim. All right. Uh, not many announcements, but we do have a special birthday today, and that's Miss Carol Stanton. And I want to say happy birthday, Carol. If you'll stand, we'll sing happy birthday to you and anybody else. Is there anybody else with a birthday coming up this week? Nobody else? Okay, let's sing happy birthday to Miss Carol. Not here. Okay. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. this week. All right, if not, Jerry, if you'll come, and uh, Ronnie, can you come today and help us? We'll receive our offering today. All right, let's keep our military in prayer, keep the situation going on over there, uh, overseas in prayer, <coughs> what a tragedy that is with Putin trying to move in on certain countries and Let's just pray that somehow, some way, God intervenes and stops and brings those people back. And uh, let's just pray for all of them, okay? All right. Ronnie, you lead us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. We need more help to hey. hear the word. Yes. Just bless this offering as, as we take it up. And just bless all the prayers that went up today. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey. Thank you.
stand together and we'll have our amazing grace. Let's sing out as unto the Lord. Everybody knows this. We're going to have music too.
to life there, didn't it? Here's one by the Easter Brothers, and uh, they're up at Mount Airy, and we go up there and see them every now and then, but I think all the dads are gone, but they still got that young guy that still sings. But anyway, this is by the Easter Brothers, and it's called, Thank You, Lord, for Your Blessings on Me. And, uh, the older you get, the more you realize how much that they are precious. Amen. Go ahead, Joe. Let's see what happens. Every time I sing one, it's a, it's an adventure. I don't know if I'm gonna make it or not. <laughs>
And how many's going to have a cookout tomorrow? So I'll know where to go. Anybody? <laughs> I figured there'd be several cookouts going on tomorrow. Started the summer season. But I'd like you to take your Bible today and join us in Exodus chapter number 12. Exodus chapter number 12. And uh, we're going to be looking today God's Memorial Day. This is God's official Memorial Day way back in the book of Exodus. He wanted them to remember how that he brought them out of Egypt with a very strong hand. And uh, Pharaoh couldn't believe it. Finally came down to his own son and he believed it. And the death angel came into his house. But when you read over here in Exodus chapter number 12, verse number 14, we see here God's Memorial Day. Notice what it says here in this passage in Exodus chapter number 12, verse number 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations, and you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And I believe that's where the idea came from, and we'll be talking about it, how we got our memorial day here in just a moment. Thank God that we can look back and see God's been good to us. Amen. Amen. He has taken good care of us, and we appreciate everyone who sacrificed for our country. So let's go to the Lord in prayer right before our message today, God's Memorial Day. Father, we thank you for the time that we can come together, look at your word today, and thank you for the wonderful singing, the fellowship, being back in church just with our church family. Bless each one here today. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Just use the message to help us to have a greater appreciation, not only for all of those that sacrificed, but for your great sacrifice as well, because we don't want to forget about that. And God, we just praise you for this great country we live in here in America. In Jesus' name, amen. I always like the story about the three widows. They lived together. And one sister got up to go to bed, and halfway up the steps, she stopped and said, Was I going up or coming down? <laughs> That's pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah. One of the sisters replied with a little bit of an aggravated voice, You are going to bed. Now go on. <laughs> well, the second sister headed to the kitchen to make herself a sandwich. Once in the kitchen, she hollered back to her sister in the living room, said, What in the world did I come in here for? And she said, you were going to make yourself a sandwich. Now go ahead and do it. And she looked around. And she said, I am just so glad I'm not as forgetful as both of you are. And she knocked on wood. And she got up and went to the door and said, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> who is it? Well, we are forgetful people. Yeah. And from time to time, I have found that forgetfulness is not really a respecter of age. It can hit the young and the old when we forget. And therefore, we come up with all kinds of helps to help us remember. I mean, tying a string around the finger, the little post-it notes that we make, day planners, memory courses. And we all need a little help in the memory and the remembrances that we've had in the past. And so today on Memorial Day weekend, we pay tribute to all of our veterans, and especially do we remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice those who paid with their own lives. They thank God for this country and they are the, the land of the free and the home of the brave here in it. No other country has ever been blessed like America, largely due to the men and women who have laid down their lives on the battlefield for us and so that we back in the homeland could enjoy freedom. I just wonder as I think about Memorial Day and all of those soldiers that sacrificed, how many unmarked graves there might be of American soldiers in the jungles or out in the deserts or even in the forest, some even in the water. They never had a funeral service preached over them. Nobody knows where they are, but God knows where they are. Amen. And thank God, God will bring every one of them back together again, and he knows where they are. He can bring every particle of every body back together again and put it all together. And God will do that one day. Amen. He says that he's going to bring all the dead back together and thank God for that. So this passage of scripture that we read this morning reminds us that God has established the Passover celebration 
as a memorial day so the children of Israel would never forget the strong hand of God that brought them out from the Egyptian bondage after 400 years and God said enough is enough. Yeah. And when God says something, mark it down, it's going to happen. Amen. And they came out strong, two million plus Israelites came out of the land of Egypt and they started of course the, the, the country of the uh, Israelites. And they were still over there today. Thank God for that. Yeah. But as you look at the passage we just read, he said, this is going to be a memorial for you. Keep it as a feast. This morning we stopped to remember all of our servicemen and all of our service women. We think about our rich history here in America. We come to the part of the world fleeing religious persecution when the pilgrims came over on the Mayflower. Why do you think they came to America to start with? It was religious persecution. The Church of England was trying to command them how to worship and they said, we're not going to be under a state rulership. God is going to tell us how to worship. Amen. And thank God they had enough courage and willpower to come across and enough faith in God. And they made it. And so we think about our nation when it was established. We had the Declaration of Independence from Great Britain. Our founding fathers came up with that in the Constitution. I've seen them both up in the National Archives in Washington D.C. We went on to fight the British a second time in the War of 1812. We had a war with Mexico. Much of the southwestern part of our border was under the dictatorship of the Mexican ruler Santa Ana until we won our independence. And then in 1861, the shot was fired on Fort Sumter, South Carolina, and the bloodiest war in American history was started. And it's called the Civil War. Lasted a little over four years. By the conclusion of the Civil War, more Americans had been killed than any other war in the history of our country. When we then went on to fight two world wars, Korean War, the Vietnam conflict, two wars in Iraq, one in Afghanistan, we're still at war with terrorism wherever it might be. And so we have to remember the statistics of the wounded and those who have died, they're staggering. I was doing some checking this week. There's approximately 1.3 million servicemen and women who have died in the United States wars that we've been through in our history. Let that sink in for a moment. Over 1.3 million died. That's a lot of people. Think about this. In the Iraq war, 44,507. Afghanistan War, 2,300. The Gulf War, 382. The Vietnam War, 58,308. The Korean War, 36,574. World War II, there was 418,500. World War I, there was 116,516. And then the Civil War, there was 820,000 to 1 million. And the American Revolutionary War, there was 4,435. Thank God for America. Amen. Thank God for those who died yes. for our country. Yes. So this weekend is a very, very important weekend. We have several traditions that we do around Memorial Day. And of course, as I said, it's the start of the summer. And vacations are starting up. And there's cookouts going to be held. And the president always places a wreath on the tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington Cemetery. Many will decorate the graves of loved ones whom they never want to forget. And the flowers and the flags are placed on the graves to emphasize the great sacrifice these soldiers made for our country. Some towns still have Memorial Day parades and celebrations that go on on Memorial Day. Now, the history of Memorial Day, very interesting how it started. Three years after the Civil War ended, May the 5th, 1868, the head of an organization of Union veterans called the Grand Army of the Republic, they established, first of all, what was known as Decoration Day. And it was a time to decorate the graves of the war who had died in the war with flowers. Major General John Logan declared that 
That would be a Memorial Day, the first one, and it was held on May the 30th. And it's kind of coincidental, tomorrow is May the 30th. It is believed that this date was chosen because the flowers are in full bloom all around the country in May the 30th in this time of the year. The first large observance was held at Arlington National Cemetery, right across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C. The Arlington Mansion was the home of General Robert E. Lee. Various Washington officials, including General and Mrs. Ulysses S. Grant, who later became our president, they presided over the ceremonies. There were speeches given. There were children of the soldiers and sailors' orphan home. And they made their way to the cemetery, and they put flowers on both the Union and the Confederate graves, and they recited prayers, and they sang hymns. Now, those who were in power today may not want you to remember that, but let me just say, our country was founded on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our country was founded on Christian values. Amen. And we didn't come over here just to waste some time and lose some soldiers. We came over here to worship our God right. and to tell everybody that He can save from the uttermost to the guttermost. Yes. Woo! And everybody in between. Amen. Amen. He's a wonderful Savior. Amen. The local observances claim to be first held in the Civil War. One of the first occurred in Columbus, Mississippi, April the 25th, 1866. There was a group of women who went to put the flowers on the graves of the Confederate soldiers who had fallen at the Battle of Shiloh. And as they looked around, they saw some Union soldiers' graves. They had no flowers on them, but they thought to themselves, somewhere there's a mother up north or there's a wife up north, and they've never even seen where their loved one's buried. Let's put flowers on their graves, and they did both north and south. And so how can we appreciate this wonderful weekend known as Memorial Day? Number one, learn how to handle worry. Because if you worry about war, you'll never have peace in your heart. God is over it all anyway. And we all maybe know loved ones, even right now, who are still serving our country and other parts of the world. Some of them are in harm's way. What can we do for them? Uh, we can pray for them. Amen. God never sleeps. He never slumbers. And when you pray for your loved one who's over there maybe fighting for our freedoms in this country or on a special mission, let it be known that God will answer prayer. The way to deal with worry is to learn to pray about everything. And the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter number 4, if you want to write this down, verse 6 and 7, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing. That basically means don't worry about anything. I, I like that. Worry is kind of like a rocking chair. Yeah. It gives you something to do, but it won't get you anywhere. <laughs> You're still sitting in the same place. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And what happens when you pray about everything? Verse 7. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That word keep means a sentry guard. A guard that will guard your heart from worry and stress and all the things that go along with it. And that guard will put the peace in there. I believe that's the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And He lives inside of the Christian. And thank God to be careful for nothing just simply means... Turn everything over to God. And God will take care of it. What do you do when you have a family member? You have a friend deported over there in that place where they're fighting going on. And even today in some of the other areas where some of the soldiers are still left behind. What do you do for them when you find out there's one missing in action? I'll tell you what you do. You take that burden to the Lord and pray for them. God does not have any distance that's too far for him. He can reach on the other side of the world. He can help our loved ones. He can touch that one that we cannot talk to. So number one, learn to pray about everything. But number two, learn to appreciate the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Let's never forget about that. The work of Jesus when he died on that cross. Why did he die? Well, it was for you and it was for me. He died for sinful men. And they whipped him and they scourged him and they put a crown of thorns on him. 
They put nails in his hands and in his feet. Why would he do it? I'll tell you why he did it. He did it because he loves you and he loves you. And Jesus died. And no doubt, we who are under the, under the penalty of sin, if we don't get saved, there's a place called hell. And I don't want to go there. Thank God I'm not going there. You say, preacher, how do you know? Because I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be woo, saved to the glory of God. You're going to be saved. Mr. Hockett believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was saved. Does that mean we're all perfect after we get saved? Oh, no, we still struggle. We still have problems. We still have that old flesh. We still have three enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. But thank God, greater is he that's in you than that's in the world. Amen. And you've got the Lord with you, friends. Yeah. Be thankful to God for that great sacrifice that he made on that cross so that he could take your sins upon himself and give you his very own righteousness. Write this scripture down. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. Who his own self, he bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Woo! I'm glad I'm healed today. I'm glad I'm healed from sin, Satan, death, destruction, judgment, hellfire. I don't want to see any of that and I won't see any of that because I'm under the blood yes. of the Savior Jesus Amen. Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses man of all sin. Amen. Write Amen. Right, this scripture down. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. 1 Peter 3 verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the Spirit. Woo! Hallelujah! What a Savior. Yes, yes. Did you see that? The just. That means He never sinned. He died for the unjust. That was us. We've all sinned. We're all in the same boat. Let's remember the great sacrifice of Jesus on this great Memorial Day weekend. And then think about this. Great Christians who died for their faith. Great Christians who died for our faith. Not only did the Savior die to make it possible that we could be saved, but we owe a huge debt to the church fathers and the apostles, many of whom became martyrs and laid down their life for the cause of Christ so we could be saved today, so we could have a Bible to read, so we could have a church to come and worship in. I'm just going to look at a couple of them today. But all of the apostles died for their faith except for Judas Iscariot. And he hung himself. And John the Apostle, they threw John the Apostle in a pot of boiling oil and left him to die. And miraculously, he survived, was banished to the Isle of Patmos, where he later wrote the book of Revelation. Yes. Yeah. Then there was Andrew, the brother of Peter. He was crucified in Edessa, Scotland. Bartholomew was beaten and crucified in India. James the Great, in the Bible tells us, the brother of John was beheaded in 44 A.D. in Judea. James the Less, the brother of Jesus, was beaten and stoned and clubbed to death at the age of 94 in Jerusalem. Jude, the other half-brother of Jesus and brother to James, was crucified in 72 A.D. Luke was hanged on an olive tree in Greece. Mark was dragged to death in Alexandria. Matthew was killed with a weapon that had a blade and a spike in 60 A.D. Matthias, the chosen disciple, uh, to replace Judas. He was stoned and beheaded in Jerusalem. Paul was beheaded by the sword of Nero in Rome. Peter was crucified upside down because Peter said, I am not worthy to die like my Savior did. Put me upside down. Philip was scourged in prison and crucified in 54 A.D. Simon was crucified in 74 A.D. in Britain. Stephen was stoned to death in 34 A.D. in Jerusalem. Thomas was thrust through with a spear in India. Polycarp, who was a famous disciple of John the Apostle, he was burned at the stake in 155, and he refused to recant. They wanted him to pledge his allegiance to Caesar, and he said, I don't pledge my allegiance to anyone but God. Amen. 
And they put him there and tried to burn him up. And the fire wouldn't burn him. And so from that point on, they had to stab him to death. That was Polycarp. John Wycliffe, the one who first translated the Bible into the English language, he is called the bright morning star of the Reformation. He was not burned at the stake. His body was killed. And then it was exhumed from the grave. Several years later, they dug his bones up, put him on trial by the Catholic Church, said he was guilty of treason because he had put the Bible in the English language, and they took his bones and burned them and threw them in the river. That's terrible. John Huss, who was a great priest, was burned at the stake for heresy against the doctrines of the Catholic Church. Particularly, he fought against the doctrines of ecclesiology and the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper. They said the Lord's Supper is the real body and blood. He said, no, it's memorial. It tells us to remember the body and the blood. And they killed him for that. Could you believe that? Most known for his translation of the Bible into English was William Tyndale. William Tyndale was a reformer that stood against the Catholic Church. He opposed King Henry VIII's divorce and he uh, was choked to death, tied to the stake, and then his body was burned to ashes. Jim Elliot, some of you remember Jim Elliot. He was a missionary back in 18, uh, 1956, not that long ago. And they wrote a book, Through Gates of Splendor. I remember reading that when I first went to Bible college. And it tells how that Jim Elliot uh, tried to reach the Aka Indians in Ecuador. Jim Elliot, Nate Saint, Ed McCulley, Pete Fleming, Roger Yoderin. They were making friendly contact with the Aka Indians there. And they had only met one of them face to face, but they were contacting them by plane and then back up. And so they decided now's the time to try to go reach them for Christ. Jim Elliott and his friends got in a canoe. They pulled over to where the Aka Indians were, and they run out of the bushes and killed every one of them. Slaughtered them. Their deaths were not in vain, though. Jim Elliott's wife, Elizabeth Elliott, continued to try to make contact and finally ended up winning the chief and the whole tribe to Jesus Christ. That's a miracle in itself. Amen. That tells you God can do anything, friends. Righteous Abel in the Bible. He was slaughtered by his own brother Cain out of jealousy for his blood sacrifice and having the blessings of God on his life. Isaiah the prophet was put in a hollow log and sewn in two with a saw. Stephen the preaching deacon was stoned to death because he preached the resurrection of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist had his head cut off and put on a silver platter because he preached against the adultery of King Herod. We thank God for every one of those Amen. who suffered for our freedoms and our spiritual freedom as well. Let me ask you a question. What will you be remembered for? Are you standing in the gap for your children, your grandchildren? Are you providing that example of reading your Bible and praying and coming to church as much as you can or witnessing to your loved ones or paying a, a tithe, showing people, hey, my allegiance, my time, my talent, my treasure is going to none other than Jesus Christ himself. When you actively tell others for Jesus what he has done for you, you're standing in the gap. When you put on a good example of what a Christian life is, that means the world to those children and those grandchildren. And they look up to you and you show them the way is not out into the world. The way is Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Psalm 33 verse number 12. And we think of all of our brothers and all of our sisters who have left us over the past several years. Here in our church, we've lost some very valuable members. Every one of them were valuable. And I hate to lose a one of them because they're, they're family. When you lose somebody in your church, that's losing a part of your family. But I can also say they're up in heaven looking down, cheering us on down here. And they're saying, keep going, Grace Baptist. Don't stop. Don't throw the towel in. Keep telling people about Jesus. Right. Keep coming to church. Keep witnessing. Keep tithing. Keep uh, uh, reading your Bible. Keep praying. Stay on your knees. Show the world that Jesus Christ makes a difference in your life. Amen. Amen. The 
back to the scriptures and you'll find that the resurrection was even mentioned back in the Old Testament. Listen to this, Job 19. Job was written years before Jesus ever came on the scene. Jesus was up in heaven in the Old Testament. He came down to Bethlehem in the New Testament. But listen to what he says here in Job 19, verse 25. I know his wife looked at him and said, Job, you've been through so much. Why don't you just curse God and die and get it over with? You know what he said? I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he shall stand at that latter day upon the earth. And though after my skins worms may destroy my body, yet, notice this, in my flesh shall I see God. He said the worms might get what they think they're getting, but they're not really getting it. Because God's going to bring my body back together. Then verse 27, Whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold and not another, through my reins be consumed within me. See, the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament, tells us the body may deteriorate, the body may die, the body may be killed in action, the body may be burned at stake, but the spirit is always alive. And to be absent from that body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Woo, I'm so glad that we've got everlasting life. That means it never stops. You take your last breath down here, woo, you're going to take your first breath over there. Amen. That way. Listen to John 15, verse 13. What a wonderful verse as it relates to Memorial Day. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Amen. That's Memorial Day. That's thinking about the soldiers and all of those who fought for our freedoms so that we could have the greatest country in all the world and the greatest love a person can ever display is when they lay their life down for their friends. Do you know who laid his life down for you? The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The early Christians, they laid their lives down so you could enjoy a rich biblical history. Many people around the world have laid down their lives so you could enjoy this great country called America. And if you're very thankful for the remembrance of all of them, say amen. Ready? Amen. amen. Thank God for that. I finish with a beautiful story. Every time I hear taps, it brings goosebumps to my neck. I mean, I can't hear it without a tear coming out of my eye. There's just something about taps played by a bugler. And if you've ever read the, the history of it, you know it's a very important story. And for those who don't know how taps came into being, I'm going to explain to you what happened. It all started back in 1862 during the Civil War. Union Army Captain Robert Ellicom was with his men at Harrison Landing in Virginia. The Confederate Army, they were on the other side of this narrow strip of land there. And during the night, Captain Ellicom heard the moans of a soldier who was severely wounded out on the battlefield. He couldn't see him, but he could hear him. Not knowing if it was a Union soldier or a Confederate soldier, the captain decided he was going to risk his life and go out and try to rescue that soldier. So he crawled on his stomach. And he got to the stricken soldier and he grabbed a hold of him and pulled him back to his side of the battlefield and his encampment. When the captain finally reached his own lines, he discovered it was actually a Confederate soldier that he had rescued. But now, by the time he got him back to his line, the soldier had already passed away and was dead. So the captain lit a lantern and when he shined the lantern on the face of the soldier, he was shocked. He was numb to death. It was his own son that he had rescued. His own son had been studying music in the South when the war broke out. And without telling his father, his son enlisted in the Confederate Army and his daddy pulled him off the battlefield, not knowing it was his son. Well, the following morning, the father was heartbroken. He asked for permission to have a full military burial for his son. And they said, we can't do that. He was a confederate. They said, but we will let you have one musician play at his service. And he decided on playing a bugler, calling a bugler to come and play a song. And what he had done, he had reached into his son's pocket. And there was a little 
sheet of paper in his son's pocket, and his son lay there dead. He pulled it out and looked at it, and it said taps. And it had some notes written on it, and he handed it over to the bugler, and the bugler played taps for the first time. And boy, that melody touches my heart. Amen. Every time I hear it, I think about sacrifice. On this Memorial Day weekend, let's determine more than ever that we're going to pray for and we're going to support the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to make that commitment. We're never going to forget what He's done for us. We're never going to forget what those who have died in the service have done for us. We're never going to forget our heroes who are still alive and serving God or some retired. Thank God for all of them. Woo! We're in the greatest nation. It's called the United States. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed today. Maybe you'd say, Preacher, I've never even been saved. Well, the Bible said if you'll call upon the name of the Lord, you would be saved. And the good news today is He loves you. He died for you, was buried for you, rose again just for you. And if you'd like to ask Him into your heart today, would you pray something like this? Dear Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Forgive me of my sin. Save my soul. And Lord, make me a home in heaven. And thank you for your great sacrifice for me. My heads are bowed, my eyes are closed. If you made that decision, and you prayed that prayer in your heart, I just want to say you've made the best decision you could ever make. I just want to pray for you today that God's going to help you in your Christian life. Anyone anywhere you'd say, Preacher, I asked Jesus to save me. Would you just look up? I don't know about you looking up. You made that decision. I'll pray for you today. Anyone, anywhere. Maybe today you'd say, Preacher, I know the Lord. I'm so glad I'm saved. And I need His strength. I need His touch. And I do want to remember Him more. He's been so good to me. And I thank God for my military friends and family and those. I just want to be a better citizen as well of this great country. Pray for me. I'll be glad. Anyone like that, you'd slip a hand up all around the room. My hands are lifted everywhere. Father, we come today. Thanking you for this great Memorial Day weekend that we can remember our loved ones. Lord, we can remember those who have sacrificed, those who are still alive. We don't ever want to forget them and pray for them as well. Thank you for Jesus and what he did for us and all of those early church fathers. And Father, we pray, bless everyone that raised a hand. Meet every need in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand on our feet while heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Richard can play something softly. And as he does... If you like to find a place around the altar, you feel free to come. The altar's always open for whosoever. Maybe you just want to come down and just say, Lord, I need that touch. I need that help. As he plays, you come. If you've been saved and you want to make that public, that's called making a public profession. I'd be glad to announce that for you. If you have trusted Christ, he talks about making it public. You come today and we'll be glad to share the good news. Maybe you want to come and join here at Grace. Whatever God leads you to do, you follow his leadership. He'll always lead you in the right path. He'll always lead you down the right trail. Oh, yes. Anybody else? God's been good to us. He has surely blessed us. We have a wonderful, wonderful nation to live in. Because of all of those who fought for our freedoms. Because of Jesus who died for our spiritual freedom. If you're glad for that, let's give them one last big amen together. Ready? Amen. All right. Hope you have a great Memorial Day. We will have service this evening at 6 o'clock, so I hope you can come back for that. Brother Jerry in the back, if you would, would you dismiss us in prayer? After dust, tell somebody you love them. Good to see them in church. Brother Jerry.